Today will be the day to take notes. Acts 16, verses 22 through 34. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. They had laid many stripes on them. They threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loose. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, here it is, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of night 
and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all of his family were baptized. Now, when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them. And he rejoiced, having believed in God with all of his household. Amen. 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 You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And allow me. Allow me to go back in time and talk about what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? In this context, we have Paul and Silas. They're in some trouble. <laughs> They're in trouble. But the Lord delivers them from prison and gives them an opportunity to share their faith. When the jailer appears in the prison, he asks the most important question that anyone will ever ask. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And as a pastor, I stand before you and I have to apologize because I assume that we understand this, the concept of salvation. I don't want to assume. Amen. Today at ground level, I don't know what you've been taught before, but I want to make sure that when you go out, you know how to answer that question. I mean, if you know, you're going to be faced with that question. Whether it's verbally or whether it's in action, we are going to be faced with the question, what must I do to be saved? Maybe you know that you need to be saved. Maybe you know what to do to be saved. But you don't understand salvation as well as you think you did. There are some concepts in the Bible that we mistake it, we misquote. People will say, money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. It's the love of money. Amen. They'll argue you down. They'll say the OJ ain't singing. <laughs> No, it's the love of money. Because once you start loving money more than the word, you will do more for that money than for the word. Amen. 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 We get some things twisted and mixed up. The question the jailer asked was important. Can we agree there? What must I do? But the answer he received was just as important. If you hear the wrong answer about how to be saved, you may never get to know God. You know, there's some, some really messed up doctrine out there <laughs> that will put requirements uh, on your salvation. You must do this. You must do this. You must do that. That must be present in order for you to be saved. When the word of God simply says believe, Simply says believe. But it's just important to give the correct answer when we are approached with the same question. It, but it's later. That answer is later. Being saved in essence is easy. But how do you get saved and don't hear the word? How do you get saved and don't know the word? Great question, Pastor. One of the biggest questions in Christianity, in my mind, is how people assume that it's the pastor's fault when there isn't growth or the church fails. They believe it. They, they, they strap that on the pastor's back. Well, you didn't bring anybody in. 
Our numbers dwindle because of you. Go time. Matthew 28 says we are to, here it is, go, make disciples, amen, and teach. Teach them to obey all of the commandments that I have taught you. Matthew 28 says that. The Great Commission. Go, yeah, baptize, and teach. You come to church to be encouraged. You come to church to be edified and equipped to go, baptize, and teach. Amen. You come to church, you come to Bible study, you come to Sunday school to be equipped to do those things. Follow me now. In Acts 13, we see, we go backwards in Scripture. In Acts 13, we see Paul and Barnabas. They're at the church of Antioch. And they're at this service, and the floor is open for a comment. Paul starts preaching. He starts preaching in verse 38. Here's what it says. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man, Jesus, is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things. Justified. Yes, justification. Yes, to be made innocent and holy. Let me keep going. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. The law of Moses, you break one of... Those commandments, you're done. <laughs> if your curfew was one o'clock and it's two o'clock, let's just stay out to four because we're already in trouble. <laughs> but then it jumps down to verses 42 and 43. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words, here it is, might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Oh, that's amazing. The choir can sing the same songs every Sunday, every month. We can sing, we can read the same litany of, of scripture every morning. But the preacher dare not preach that same message next week. This message of forgiveness was so powerful to people. They wanted to hear it again. It goes on to say this. Now, when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Verse 44 says this, on the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Almost the whole city came together. Why? Because those folks that heard that message thought that message was so important that they had all their friends, all of their family, they brought them back the next week to hear that word. Because the word of forgiveness, the word of forgiveness was foreign to the law of Moses. There was no way out of the law of Moses. If you broke one of the laws, you were, you, you were, you were destined to be punished. The word of God, Jesus himself, when he introduced something that was so powerful that they never had before in life, and it's called forgiveness. It's called forgiveness. Forgiveness for what? Forgiveness from what? The mess up. Fall into your flesh. Doing some things that were kind of ill-advised. Having a backslidden moment. We've all had those. We've all messed up. There's forgiveness in the word of God. And that was the greatest gift the Jews or the Gentiles had at that time. Forgiveness. That is the greatest message we need to preach. Forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Unforgiving out there. We've got people waiting to put little U's and big me's behind closed, behind bars. 
Because that's a money maker. The more of us they get behind bars, the more money they make. Unforgiveness. Forgiveness. Somebody needs to hear this today. Somebody needs to understand that there is this thing called forgiveness. <coughs> that thing you went through before, there's forgiveness in that. That bad thought you have, what you did to someone, out of that moment of rage, there is forgiveness in that. Our Lord and Savior is waiting to forgive, but there's something else that's tied to this forgiveness. It's called repentance. How do I get forgiveness? How am I forgiven? You got to repent. You got to repent. You got to ask. You got to say, I'm sorry. sorry. You got to mean it. Amen. You've got to know what you've done wrong. And then ask for forgiveness, repent for what you've done wrong. But the biggest question is this, who am I repenting to? <laughs> Crickets. Who am, I for, who am I repenting to? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's where salvation comes in. The thief on the cross says, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. That was an admission of his holiness. That was an admission of who he was. That is salvation and at his, at his finest. Pavement level. So when we go out, all we have to do is tell him, you got to believe. You got to believe. You don't have to wear a shirt and towel on Sunday morning. You can wear your red fingernail polish. <laughs> yeah. You can wear pants. How about that? You can do all of that. You've got to believe. It's a hard issue. Believing is a hard issue. And if your heart is right, if your, if your heart is able to do right, Salvation waits for you. That is the message. Amen. That is the message. Amen. But what does it mean to be saved? I'm glad you asked. What does it mean to be saved? The definition saved, to rescue from harm and from danger. And we've all seen, seen people get saved from dangerous situations in movies and, and on TV. But this is kind of the same thing, but the stakes are a lot higher. Until we are saved, everybody in this room, everybody that we come across is in terrible danger. How many of you can agree with me that we're all sinners? Amen. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. Sin. The law of Moses, the law of Moses was, was, we think it's, Ten Commandments, and it stopped there. It was it was over 166, as I'm told. There were a lot, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees they would administer the punishments to the publicans and this is the higher ups, the ones who ran the towns. They would administer the punishments, but they couldn't follow the 166 or the entire law either. So how can you, if you can't follow the entire law, punish me when I break the law? It's funny how that worked out. But we are all sinners. Amen. If we can get there and, and say there are no big eyes and little U's, we understand that we are all sinners. You may not think you're a sinner like the Sadducees Pharisees, the publicans. We may not think we're all sinners, but anything that we do which violates the law of God, not Moses, we're putting that on the shelf, but anything that we do that violates the law of God is a sin. Disobedience, lying, back talking, cheating, stealing, etc. There's a long laundry list of things that we could do that goes against the law of God. 
And we have all fallen short of the glory of God. So let's, 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 let's get this understanding today. We are all sinners. And nobody is better or less than any of anybody else. We have all fallen miserably short of the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I rejoice in that because I've got a God that's sitting there that's saying, listen, I know you messed up, but I forgive you. I know you messed up, but I know my, I know my child's heart. Let me help you out. Let me clean you up. Yeah, that's the God I serve. I don't know about the God you serve, but that's the God I serve. Romans 6 and 23 tells us that we are all headed to hell. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in, in Christ Jesus our Lord. This verse tells us that there is a price on sin. There is a price on the things that we do against the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. If we don't come to Jesus for salvation, then God has no choice but to allow us to go to hell. He has no choice because we choose that there are several people. There are people who will say, how can a God that claims to love you so much send you to hell? No, you are, mis you are, you are misunderstanding some things. You choose that road. One way ticket without any, any layovers. You choose that yourself. But the difference when a person gets saved he receives certain blessings. They receive the forgiveness of sin. They receive a new life. How many of you want a new life? Amen. Yeah. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 tells us, therefore, if anyone, that would be all of us, so we are the anyones, <laughs> if anyone in Christ, he is, if therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how the bones ache. I don't care how the sight is diminishing. When you become a child of God, all things are, are new. Amen? Amen? We haven't escaped from hell, but a home in heaven. John 14, 1 through 3, the fact that the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let not your heart be troubled. You who believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Back where I am. There you may also be. He's telling you this. I have a hill, I have a house on the hill. I've got a room for you. If you want it, it's yours. Come get it. Because where I go, I'm going to take you with me as my child. I'm not going to leave you where I found you. I'm not going to turn my back on you. What's mine, you have access to. How about that? That's that's. Oh man, that's a shout. Because some of us have nothing. Some of us came from nothing. And to have that connection with the highest of royalty, to have that connection with the one who, who has created it all, to have that connection with the all powerful one, the all knowing one, he knows everything before I think it gives me what I need to make it through the good times and the bad times. We have that connection. There you may also be with me. But we ask in this, this whole concept of salvation and being saved, somebody may ask you, who is Jesus Christ? And you may say, that's a basic answer. You know, I know who Jesus is. I know who he is to me. He's the son of God. How about that? He's the son of God. Matthew 3 and 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He is God. How about that? 
John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. With God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And here it is. And without him, nothing was made that was made. So when all of this came about, he was there. I like that. That's who I'm saved by. He's the sacrifice for my sin. He's the one that can wash me clean. For he, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. He's the only source of salvation. We can't get our salvation through our job. We can't get our salvation through our money. We can't get our salvation through coming to church. Amen. Amen. I know somebody's like, what do you mean? I said, you took, we're supposed to come to church every Sunday. No. <laughs> Here's where you get edified. You get equipped to go out. You do know that your pastor does not make sheep. <laughs> your pastor does not make sheep. Your pastor is to equip you to be healthy sheep. Amen. So therefore, healthy sheep make sheep. Follow me now. Healthy sheep make sheep. Healthy sheep say, hey, can you preach that message next Sabbath so my friends and my family can hear it? Healthy sheep says, I got a brother that's in trouble and the only place I know that they can get healed the only place I know they can get forgiveness is in the hospital. I'm going to take them to the hospital of the Lord on Sunday. Amen. Amen. That's what healthy sheep does. That's how this place starts busting at the seams. Last week was a beautiful thing. Amen. We were busting at the seams. Amen. That was the purpose of Family and Friends Day. It's to show you what can happen when sheep bring their families and friends, the ones that they love, to hear a word that's edifying, that's encouraging, because there's not edifying and encouraging on the other side of these walls. Amen? Yeah. Amen. But Christ, let me get there. You know, I kind of went into the weeds a little bit, but Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is the only way to salvation. I, John, as they say in the old church, I, John, 5 and 12, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. He is the only source of salvation. But finally, we've got to talk about this thing called salvation. We've got to talk about this thing called salvation. It's simple. You got to believe. What does believe mean? You trust. You trust that his word is, is pure, it's true and authentic. Amen? How many believe in, 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 in this thing right here called the gospel? Amen. 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 God made salvation so simple that anybody can do it. Yeah. You ever wake up Christmas morning Put together toys or put together or or just any vanilla tubes that you go buy a shelf and you go to put the, that shelf together or whatever together and you look at the instructions and you wish you would have hired somebody to put that thing together because you know when you're done with it you're gonna have some screws left over and it may not work right hey amen somebody salvation isn't that bad Salvation is not that. We all exercise faith every day. Can we agree there? Yeah. 
Every time we flip on a light switch, we trust that the light is going to come on if you pay the bill. <laughs> yeah. Every time we use a remote, change to the channel we want to change to. When we eat a meal, every time we get in the car, we turn that key or we push that button. We expect the car to start up. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We believe that it's going to do exactly what it's designed to do. The word of God will do exactly what it's designed to do. It will edify you. It will encourage you. It will correct you. Uh, don't think just because you believe and you have faith in our Lord and Savior that there is no correction. There is no uh, accountability. How about that? That is, that is the biggest enemy, I believe, of the church. That's pure Dwayne Oliver. Is accountability. Oh, it don't look that bad. He, oh, he's okay. It don't it ain't hurting nobody. But no, we've got to be accountable. There's an accountability aspect to following God. But let's get back to salvation. Salvation, sir, is believing. Believing that his word is going to do what it says it's going to do. Believing that his word is going to purify, it's going to correct me, it's going to edify me, it's going to push me towards perfection. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> but salvation is secure. Salvation comes with an ironclad guarantee. I like guarantees. I like guarantees. <clears throat> Once you are saved, it can never be lost again. I like that because I can mess some things up along the way. <laughs> yeah, we all can mess some things up. <clears throat> John 10, John 10, 28. And I gave them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither, here it is, shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Yeah. If you will place your faith in Jesus Christ, you need never fear dying lost and going to hell. I like that. Because under my own power, under my own thinking, under my own flesh, I may do some things that will send me straight to hell. I need a Savior. We all need a Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. We all need somebody that's there to catch us and, and, and pick us up, brush us off. Amen, somebody. Amen. We've all done some things that we need to be saved from. And I'm so glad that he's the one that's doing it. I am. I'm glad he's the one that's doing it. I'm glad that my salvation is, is not in the hands of somebody at, at City Hall. I'm glad that my salvation isn't in the hands of someone who's in charge of the neighborhood watch. I'm glad my salvation isn't in charge of a police officer. I'm glad that my salvation isn't in charge of myself. Amen. 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 Once I believe, I believe. And salvation comes. Now, mind you, I may go through some trials. I may go through some tribulations. I may go through some heavy pressure moments in life. I may have a backslidden moment, but to God be the glory, I am saved. Amen. Amen. And I like that. So when you're asked on the street, when you are asked at the grocery store on your job, when you are at the backyard cookout and someone asks you, Sister Washington, why do you believe in this Jesus so much? And what must I do to be saved? You take them by the hand, you pray with them, and you tell them all they have to do is believe. You'll do the rest. Amen. Don't worry about the details. Take them by the hand. Walk with them. Because this road needs to be walked with somebody. You got to help family out. And if you think this word that we give every Sunday is worth everyone hearing, bring them with you. Amen. One of the things that bothered me one of the things that bothered me when I was um, answering the call to preach was that my understanding was everybody that I knew and loved 
would not be saved. That if everything stopped, if, if, if the Lord came, at that moment, there were people that I knew that were not saved. Don't you think this word is, is good enough to tell everybody about? Amen. Amen. You go buy a car and they give you a good deal. You tell all your friends, hey man, go to that joint down there. They're gonna, they're gonna hook you up. Give them my name. Tell them I tell them I sent you. Amen. That restaurant that has the soul food egg rolls. <laughs> <laughs> You want to tell everybody, listen, that place, oh man, the food is so good. That mechanic, car messed up, you want to go to this guy over here, he's going to take good care of you. He's not going to tax your pockets too much. Um, here's where you can go and buy a dozen eggs without taking out a credit app. <laughs> We share the best things of life with each other. And there's nothing wrong with that. I promise you, there's not. But we should want to, we should be excited to share the best thing in life. And that is the word of God. Amen. Amen. And this thing called salvation. Because everyone, everyone should be saved. Amen. Amen. Everyone should be saved. Amen. Everyone should want to be saved. And today, I'm going to ask a question for all of those that are listening, whether you're here, whether you are out there listening um, in, social, on, in social media land, wherever we may be connected today. If you have found yourself outside of that loving, that caring, that covenant relationship, or you don't even know about that relationship, and you want to learn more about the relationship between you and Christ. I want to pray with you today. If you want to learn more about this thing called salvation and how vitally important it is, not only to you, but to those that may come behind you, to those that you may be attached to, I really want to pray for you today. If you have found yourself outside of the covering, the umbrella of a church home, I'm going to pray that you find that church home. The doors of Grace Community Church here at 1908 West 20th Street in the city of Lorraine are always open. They're always open. They're always open to receive you to begin your journey towards salvation and towards spiritual freedom. We may be small. Yeah. We may not have a whole bunch of bells and whistles, but I guarantee one thing. You are going to get the pure word of God. You're going to get loved. Amen. And you will never feel alone. Amen. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Whether it's by candidate for baptism, restoration, restoration, where you've been away, now you want to come back. Letter from another church. You've been out wandering and weary. You say, I want to join. I want to link up with Grace Community Church. Or your Christian experience. You may be moving and you're new to the area. And you say, Grace Community feels good to me. This is where you connect with Christ. And you want to join this, this body of believers. I want to pray with each and every one of you. I'll even go a step further and say this. Every church is not for everybody. Right. My prayer is that you find somewhere a Bible-believing church that you can understand, that you can hear the Word of God on your level, that you connect with the Word of God. Amen. That is my, Amen. That is my goal. My, my, my job is not to manage the fishbowl. My job is to go fishing. And if I can 
get somebody to simply come to Christ. Job well done. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you today and we bless you. Thank you for your word. We thank you that we've got a clear understanding of the gift of salvation. Now, Father, we know that the, the work begins now. That there are some things that we have to let go of, some things that we have to move beyond. But any movement that we make, Father, is, is moving closer to you, closer to your perfection. Now we ask that you continue to be with us, continue to walk with us, Father. Continue to clean us as we may get dirty in this journey. Continue to be there to clean us up, to set us right, and to move us on our way. We love you today, Father, for all that you have done. Thank you for not leaving us where you found us. Thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. These are the blessings today we ask in your son, Jesus. We pray. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 All of those out there watching this, watching this message, if you want to, if you feel the need and necessity to give to Grace Community Church, again, you can send your tithe, your offering to 1908 West 20th Street in the city of Lorain, Ohio, 44052. Um, and as we transition into our communion service, know that Bible study will be Thursday. It will be Thursday. We had a great turnout this Thursday. I was worried that we may not, but we had a really good turnout this past Thursday. It will be Thursday, um, starting at 7 o'clock, same time normally, but it will be Thursday instead of Wednesday, just for a little while until I, until I finish these classes. Um, friend, Pastor Michael Howard, Howard, from Wesley United Methodist Church for, for hanging out with us just for a little while today. Pastor, thank you for, for being part of the fellowship today. Um, all minds and hearts clear? Amen. Uh, amen. amen. Thank you. We broke bread and you supped with them. Now today we can't be there with you on that day. But today is just symbolic of that last meal, Father. It's the only way that we can suffer with you. Because in your word says, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. So today we remember that, that time. We remember that, that season that you were in. We rejoice that in that season, you thought about us. You thought about us. Now today as we take this bread and we take this wine, we know they have no magical purposes, Father. They're just symbolic of the body and bread that was broken, battered, and bruised for the remission of our sins. We love you today, Father. We thank you for what you did on Calvary. Today we give you honor, glory, and praise. These and other blessings we ask for your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Oh. to the cross. They nailed him to the 
Stop saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we drink together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes again. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this call, many are weak and sickly amongst you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together, tarry for one another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. 
to the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth, now, and forevermore. And let the church say amen. 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 Go in peace, and everybody have a great week. Amen. Have a great week.